So I've got is a Hate King here bringing you a trailer breakdown for Resident Evil 8 Village. <laughs> so I thought this would be fun to do, also get into it. And also sort of just, uh, you know, what's the word? Get through the annoyance that this is going to be exclusive to next gen consoles only. Which means I'm going to have to get a PS5 now. In 2021. When this game comes out. At least that's going to be the plan now. I wanted to wait a year or two. Seems I can't do that. Because if I want to play this game. I've got to get that console. You know I was, I was hoping this would be cross jet. That's what the leaks were saying. I mean they were, they were pretty much 95% accurate. Except for that one part, so unless Capcom ends up surprising us in August and be like, don't worry, it's going to be a cross-gen tile too, here you go. But no, I, I, the developer message, the special developer message they did pretty much did not confirm that. So, I mean, they pretty much said it's it's PS5, uh, Xbox, a, Xbox X series, and stream. Steam? Stream? I don't know. But yeah, anyway, let's, let's get to analyzing this trailer so starting off right off the bat we start with uh, these words it could even be the tagline of the game his story comes to a close whose story is coming to a close okay let's think about this they obviously Ethan is the main character in this game right but then we also have Chris who's our secondary protagonist slash antagonist in the game so does that mean his story is coming to a close? Keep in mind, Capcom... Here are characters that Capcom wanted to kill, kill off in the games, right? In, in Resident Evil 4, at least in the original beta versions for Resident Evil 4, Leon was supposed to die. Hell, Leon was supposed to be in Cold Veronica originally and he was supposed to die in that. He didn't, he didn't die in the beta versions, obviously, like in the final version of Resident Evil 4, he didn't die. Uh, Resident Evil 5, I believe Jill, like one of, one of the parts of the game was that Jill was supposed to die, or maybe there would have been a choice, like where you can save her, or she dies, and you get like the good or bad ending, that was, that's never been confirmed, but the, the hints were sort of there that maybe she was supposed to die, but again, she didn't, and then Resident Evil 6 is the most uh, interesting one, in that Chris was 100% supposed to die in that game, they pretty much set up his death and foreshadowed it from beginning to end of his campaign, Piers was supposed to take over, but then at the last second they decided to change it to Piers instead. So Piers dies and Chris lives. And yeah, I was never a fan I was never a fan of that. I like Chris's campaign in Rari 6, but I honestly think he should have died. And it you know, we should have the epilogue should have been his funeral with Piers, Claire, uh, Barry, Jill attending. That would have been a great sort of send-off for his character. Instead, nope, they kept him alive. Uh, to continue on, and then uh, obviously we get with we get Resident Evil Seven, and his look is completely different. We we all thought it was going to be Hunk or someone else, big massive, uh, um, matching from all of us uh, uh, regarding that look uh, because we were just confused. And then obviously you know, with this with this one, uh, they've obviously changed his look to what he looks more like, similar to the previous games, which is great. It's a great change because holy crap, like RE Seven, man, what were you doing with that? What what was that design? Anyway, his story comes to a close could pretty much refer to Chris potentially dying in this game, which I am fine with, as long as we get a good scene at the end with Claire, Jill, and maybe Barry, but I'll get to Barry in a second, because uh, there's something something uh, about that that uh, might be very sad in a second, but let's continue watching through this. Uh, so we, we got Mia narrating the trailer then, obviously she's talking to the, the baby, this is set a few years after Resident Evil 7, and they're now sort of in hiding and living a secluded life, I guess, you know, after what they went through. Uh, the rumors are saying that the baby is infected. That it, that, that, you know, because we never saw Mia and Ethan technically get... The canon version actually is that Mia was healed. Because Ethan did give her the injection, the, the, the E vaccine. But, uh, that... That apparently doesn't fully, fully cure you, apparently, I don't know. Because we never saw Ethan cured, you know, he still had the, you know, he gets his head cut off and it gets reattached, he gets his leg cut off, it gets reattached. Uh, so there, there were a lot of few moments in, 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 in that game, basically, where he, obviously he never got the vaccine. So these guys, these guys left with traces of the, uh, uh, you know, the EV, the E-virus, basically, in them. 
So what happens if they had a baby, right? And uh, the leaks are saying that it's it's a it's 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 a mutant. Like it look it, it looks disformed than that. So I don't know if that's true. Because in the trailers we do see a normal looking baby, so what's going on there, right? This game is supposed to have hallucinations as well, so keep that in mind. So you're getting a you're getting a good look at some of the environments here. It, it, this feels like the Baker House, like it's like an it's like an ob, ob, update of the Baker House, but it, like in this game, if that makes sense. So I'm a, I imagine you sort of start off investigating like a small area, and then it just opens up, and you're like, whoa. So this shot right here, we got Ethan opening up the curtains, and this guy shoots him. Surprisingly, he doesn't fall back or anything. It's a sh it's a freaking shotgun up close as well, like no damage there. So this is our first, I'm assuming this is our first NPC character that we meet in the village. So you can instantly tell from the details here that this is, this is the RE engine at play here. Like, it, it took a few seconds for me to even grasp that this is RE8 like. Like, as I was starting to think about it, like, is this RE8? I think it is RE8. So again, look at the guy's house. Obviously, like I said, I, I'm assuming this is going to be similar to the, uh, sections in RE4 and RE5 where you're defending yourself from enemies from entering the house so this could be an extension of that perhaps maybe uh, let's look at the details here in the house look looks normal you got some potatoes you see you got the fallen potatoes on the ground so that I think those images that we got were of this place of this building perhaps uh, skulls on the on the walls a little painting is that like a tr big giant tree there maybe and we we got our first glimpse of Ethan with the gun obviously exploring that and there's that beast man running out, or the werewolf beast. We're going to call them beast man at this point. Like, I don't think it makes sense to call them werewolves. They're obviously inspired by werewolves, but it's a beast man. You got one of the beast man smashing down, grabbing the guy. We don't know if he dies. I think we see this dude several times in the trailer, actually. So, uh, I don't think he dies here. And then we, we got one grabbing from the, from the ground. So, maybe there's a basement here, and it's grabbing Ethan and pulling him down. So, we're getting this symbol here of this... I'm assuming this is the symbol of, of the villains or whatever, or whatever, as we see the symbol several times actually drawn on floors and walls. This, uh, and in the, in the developer's special video, there was like a big focus on this object as well. Like, they, they told us to look at it carefully. Um, first off, the wings going on, on the black wings going from, from this side and down. It, it reminds me of the Umbrella logo, actually. So there, there is that. Like, like if you, if you, if you were to sort of like do a circle around, it does look like the umbrella logo. And in the center of it, you've got what looks like a fetus. Okay, I'm getting berserk vibes now from this. Like, that's what it reminds me of. That that, that, that looks like a deformed, parasitic fetus. Uh, now, is is this supposed to represent Mia and Ethan's child? Uh, is this meant to represent some sort of new bioweapon, perhaps? Remember, the EV, the EVs were were developed. As, as from fetuses, like they were grown from fetuses, so maybe this is how the EVs came to be. Maybe this is the place where they developed the EVs in the first place. I don't know. Uh, maybe this is some sort of new religious order, perhaps. Again, don't know. We'll, we'll continue going through. We got a shot of a, a maiden with a sword and a goat shield. Uh, maybe this was a heroine of the town. Uh, curious what this town is going to be. Uh, from from uh, footage revealed about the uh, inventory screen, which is similar to RE4's Attachy case, which is I think back now. I think that's confirmed to be sort of back. Uh, people looked at the uh, uh, the currency numbers and what it, or what it reminded them of, and apparently it's it's Romanian currency. So this game uh, this game's uh, location takes place somewhere in Romania, which makes sense because that's where we got the whole supernatural elements of werewolves, vampires, and witches. So obviously uh, this this is this is a supernatural I, I want to say it's it's a biohazard twist on supernatural elements okay because we know that none of this none of these things in this game are going to be supernatural okay the beast man potentially vampires and ghosts which it which is or whatever all going to be explained to be part of some sort of virus and hallucinogen so keep that in mind we got the symbol here on the ground again uh, a lot of occult witch stuff going on basically imagine if we got voodoo stuff and we got the uh, castle there in the background. Uh, there's a door there with uh, it's missing two two uh, faces basically. You know, it's the same statue lady with the gold shield and the sword fighting what looks like the devil. Uh, obviously, this is a puzzle. You know, you're gonna have to find the two uh, emblems, I believe, the emblems or whatever uh, icons, and put them in to progress into the castle. Uh, we get this shot of this uh, mysterious woman. Uh, I don't know if that's supposed to be. 
the Emily character? I don't think so, because we I think we see Emily's character later on in the trailer. This is probably a new character taking care of the baby. Is this Ethan and Mia's baby? Uh, we got some guys. I think maybe this is the same one. Maybe this is the same man. I don't know. The outworking. Apparently, they said that uh, you get to explore the village and sort of maybe interact with NPCs. So it's not going to be a full on like rah, a crazy scale. Like maybe it's more of a slow approach to how all the craziness goes down. Um, uh, we see a big uh, farm area of the village here. Obviously, uh, uh, this, this is giving me sort of like Sleepy Hollow vibes. Now, if you guys seen Sleepy Hollow, there's that whole beginning sequence where the guys uh, try to get out from the village, right? And and he, he ends up right running through the cornfield or through the farm, and there's like the big scarecrows and everything. So that's that's sort of reminding me of that. Imagine we get like a headless <laughs> horseman like chasing you. That would be funny. So I don't know if this is the same. No, this guy looks a bit younger here. So this is definitely not the same guy. From, from the house, like, so that's not the old dude. Uh, closing the doors in your face. We've got this woman here, maybe the mistress of the house, or the caretaker of this house. Uh, is this the house? Is this a castle? This looks like a normal house, actually, like a normal apartment building house or something in the village area. It doesn't look like a castle, if that makes sense. So, here's our first glimpse of the Emily character. So, this is our third protagonist of the game, who we are going to play as as well, so... Apparently, her story is that she's looking for her father. Uh, more shots of this dude. I don't know if this is the old guy in the hat or if it's this is the other guy in the hat. Maybe it's the same character. I don't know. There's this crows. Are we gonna get crows? I don't know. Uh, again, I think this is. I think this is meant to be the old guy. He does have the shotgun, so maybe he survives and he joins you. Uh, here's Emily taking care of the guy. Uh, maybe this is her dad. Uh, uh, may, 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 you know, and uh, they end up helping helping you throughout the game. So this this here is our first confirmation, actually. Like, if you if you weren't sure that this was Resident Evil 8 or a Resident Evil game in general, this this shot here is pretty much the confirmation you need. That yes, this is this is Resident Evil. Okay, we got this pedestal or icon, whatever it is, and there's the umbrella symbol in the middle of it. Uh, now, what's interesting to note is is that the uh, the the, the the dark out sections on in red it, it looks like it's in blue so I don't I don't again this is just a crazy theory uh, this could be pre representing blue umbrella so maybe we are going to see more of blue umbrella perhaps maybe this is their origins maybe this is a uh, uh, I don't know maybe this is this entire area is 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 part of the Spencer family maybe from years ago don't know uh, interesting icons we got there a shoe horse uh, maybe a mermaid in there. Uh, I don't know, that looks like the sun and the moon together, and then I don't know what the other one at the far, that one's blurred out, so we don't know what that looks like. Obviously, this is probably some sort of puzzle, maybe. You know, maybe we have to get these, uh, find these things and put them in, maybe something happens. So, we, we see we see Emily there being dragged by some old dude. Is this the old man? I don't think so, because when we saw the old man, he didn't have a beard. So, this dude, this is a completely different character here. He's got a beard, obviously. He's got uh, you know, black spots here, like uh, blood. I think I think that symbolizes the blood, unless it's the molded again. Don't know. Uh, she does look a bit like Claire. You know, at first when I saw, I was like, "Is this Claire?" Like, obviously, it's not Claire. So she's getting pulled back by by this guy. Is it her dad? I don't know. We see the shot of the same guy again. The birds. Maybe he, he's about to die. We see some horses. Uh, obviously, the whole black uh, uh, spots there and there is is. Is blood properly or, or molded blood? Maybe I don't know. Maybe maybe black blood blood turns black in the snow. I don't know. Like someone can confirm to me what happens to blood when it's really cold. Uh, shot of Emily again, or maybe this is the woman in the trailer. I think I think this might be the woman that we saw in the house, like the caretaker, perhaps. Yeah, that was definitely the caretaker because you can see that she was wearing that dress. This is Emily. She's wearing sort of like robes instead. Uh, some guy in the. So, uh, I don't know if this is the same old man. I think it might be. It might not be. Uh, a bit hard to keep going back and forth trying to figure this out. Here we got a black goat. And uh, this reminds me of that movie, The Witch. If you ever, if you've ever seen that movie with, with, uh, with like the kids and the, the whole uh, dad trying to keep his kids. And there's this black goat at the end. At the end. I think the black goat's supposed to be Satan in disguise and ends up stabbing the father with its horns. Like it's, 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 it's. It's creepy as hell, man. This is giving me creepy vibes because I hate goats, man. Like, goats are creepy as hell. This whole game, obviously, has got some sort of theme with, to do with goats. But uh, it's it's funny because uh, uh, that woman with the statue and that, she's got a goat shield. So, obviously, maybe, maybe goats are good, perhaps, like, in this game, maybe. Maybe goats symbolize uh, strength or freedom or whatever, like, against the coming darkness or some shit. Like, 
I don't know. Uh, so here we, I think here we get our first glimpse of the witch character, big horns and everything. I've never played Outlast 2. I played Outlast 1 and the uh, DLC. I never got around to playing Outlast 2. I saw my copy. I didn't want to play it. Okay, I wasn't in the mood for all that crap. Like, uh, those games did, uh, just, I couldn't handle the stress of playing those games with no weapons, man. Like, god damn it. Give me, give me some guns or something. I can't go through all of that with just a freaking camera. But that, that uh, this, this character, because I've seen walkthroughs, this character reminds me of that, uh, of that chick with the, with the, with the hook, uh, with the, the, the anchor, whatever, like, I don't know, I don't, I don't know, that's what it reminds me of. So obviously, obviously, this is one of our antagonists. Maybe this is the stalker character. So we're getting a good shot of her here. Crazy, crazy ass. Lady, uh, it's crazy how much there is in this in this nearly three minute trailer. Do you mean like there's so much going on? So we got this shot of a of a fire, right? Uh, I don't know where this takes place. Obviously, there's two characters. You got one character there and another character. I think this is from Ethan's perspective, and then whoever that character is next to him, there's something in their hand, maybe a gun, and there's someone in ahead of them, and there's like fire coming out. So I think this takes place in the village section of the game. This isn't a flashback to early on. Uh, Okay, so here we got our f uh, first shot of the uh, main or secondary antagonist, okay? This is obviously Ethan spying from a window, so obviously we're getting some cool Veronica vibes as well, like when you're spying on the uh, Ashfords, when you go into the room. So obviously this is this character's room. Now keep in mind, this character is dressed up all in white. And it looks like she's looking at herself in the mirror, disgusted, maybe even talking. But if you pay attention, she's actually using a phone, okay? She's on the phone, here. So whoever she's talking to, she's probably pissed. Uh, it's an old-style phone as well, like, it's one of those rolling phones. I haven't seen those in years. So th th this, this country they're in is pretty much very, very backwards and old-school. But yeah, this character, this mysterious character that we have here, I'm... The leaks have said that Alex Wesker is going to be in this game. That she's the secondary antagonist of this game. I'm seeing an old woman, not old old woman, an older lady, an older cougar if you will, wearing a white dress. And honestly, I'm getting Alex Wesker vibes from her. I want to say that this is Alex Wesker in Natalia's body. Keep in mind... Um, what year did uh, Revelations, uh, where did, what year did RE6 actually take place in? And that was 2012, 13? Keep in mind, the games do sort of go real time. So if that took place in like 2012, 13 and that, and Revelations 2 takes place before that, so say maybe 2012 and what, Nat Natalia was like what, 10, 11 in that game? Maybe 12? Um... And now we're in 2020. When this game comes out, it's going to be 2021. So again, real time. Uh, if she was 10 years old around then, she would probably be about 20 years old. So, uh, you know, they can news. They can bring Natalia back uh, as an older character now. Uh, so is this Natalia in Alex Wesker's... Uh, in, in, is this Alex Wesker in Natalia's body? She seems a bit too old, do you know what I mean? To be Natalia... This person, at least when I'm looking at it, it looks like she's in her 30s or 40s, do you know what I mean? So, it's a bit too old to be. Maybe it's all the makeup and the dress. Maybe that's going to be a twist. Maybe Alex being in Natalia's mind has some sort of reverse effect where she ages faster, perhaps. Or maybe this is the result of a new virus. Maybe Alex wanted to grow up bigger and be go back to what she previously looked like, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. We, we have no confirmations yet if this is indeed Alex Wesker, so... We'll continue going, and this next shot, we see the witches, I'm assuming, or, or the other witches uh, of the game, uh, that are probably going to stalk you in the area. One of them's got, like, freaking flies coming out, and there's another one walking off there. Uh, let's continue on. Okay, now we get in this shot of who I'm assuming is Alex Wesker, and she, she seems to be in charge of these women. There's three of them, keep in mind. Uh, one there. And two there next to her on the other side. Um, they're obviously they're in some sort of bedroom. Did they, they, they even sneak in here and get caught? Okay, like I said, if this is Alex Wesker in Natalia's body, she was living with the Burton family. If this is, this is obviously 10 years later. So here's my theory, guys. Uh, like I said, the leaks said there don't be a lot of deaths in this game. And it's supposed to be very dark and unexpected. So here's my theory, which may be very, very wrong. 
And part of me kind of hopes it is, but the other part of me is like, you know what? Go all out. Go all out if this is the case. What if these three women, because we only see three of them here. Uh, uh, there might be more, but I'm assuming this is it. These, these are sort of our antagonists that we're going to encounter in the game. And all three of them seem to be women. What if these women are Moira, Polly, and was their mom called Lisa? Ah, uh, you know, I'm just saying, this could be the Burton family. This could be the Burton family kidnapped and brainwashed by Alex to do her bidding. And Barry most likely is dead. Okay, the dude was, was in his 50s or late 50s or whatever, right? He was pushing it. Okay, he's older than Chris. So he could very well be dead. And this might be one of the reasons. This might actually be one of the reasons why Chris, we see in the trailer, or as the leaks have suggested, is going to be some sort of antagonist in the game. Maybe he's found out about his best friend being dead and his family being taken. And if that is the case, what would Chris do? Because again, if if see the rumors said that this game was originally Revelations free, okay, it 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 it, it was supposed to take place after Resident Evil Seven and Revelations Two. You play as Ethan, you play as Chris, and apparently you played as Rebecca before she was cut out from the game, and potentially replaced by Emily. I guess you know maybe they want a new character in that to sort of ease you into the environment and to the game's location and story, which would make sense. But if it indeed was a see, if it if it if it was indeed Revelations Three, it makes sense that Alex Westcobo would be in it. It would make sense for them to sort of continue off the that big cliffhanger from the end of Revelations Two because that was a huge, huge cliffhanger. Okay, it doesn't matter if you got the. It matters a lot. It matters a lot what ending you get. But in the end of the day, a good versus bad ending. Really, there is no good versus bad ending here. You either have the bad ending or you have the true ending. Okay, and the true ending is not a good ending, okay? It might end well for the heroes, but at the end of the day, that game ended with the revelation that Alex had succeeded in her plans. She had succeeded in transferring her mind to a little girl's body, and she was now living in the household of a family, like, that, that she could properly, potentially kill at any given time if, if, if she gets older or stronger. So, is this the result? I'm kind of hoping it is. I really want to see that aspect if it's true. But then that also means, are we going to see Barry die in a flashback? Is he going to be dead off screen? Or is Barry going to be in this game? And he's going to be one of those characters that's going to have a surprise uh, appearance. And he and Chris are going to team up to maybe save save his family and that. I don't know. I, I, I'm curious to see if again. I'm curious to see how much of the leaks are true because again, this is the same. This is the same guy who leaked everything else, right? And it's so far, it's all seeming to be real and true. So let's continue on. So we're getting a glimpse of our main hall in the game, which is a beautiful. Seriously, main halls in Resident Evil games when you do it right, mwah, beautiful, perfect as always. Uh, getting a bit of a close up here. Uh, they kind of do, uh, I'm kind of starting to think they resemble vampires here, or Stregoi, if you want, like, I've been watching the strain guys, and in Romania, vampire means Stregoi, so, so yeah, a big glimpse of our main hall, seriously, it is, it's magnificent, I mean, look at it, Jesus, and then here we get our first glimpse of the beast man, this dude's wearing a shirt, so it, it look, we, uh, what we've seen here, I'm thinking there's several beast men here, there, there, there looks like to be a man on a pike there, there's there's one, there's two on the roof, and there's one jumping down with a big ass hammer, I'm thinking, I'm thinking this is going to be similar to sort of the uh, Resident Evil 4, Resident Evil 5, uh, uh, what is it, swarm section if you will, or the, or the early village stage, where you get, where you get hoarded, and you're, you're sort of stuck in the house, and you're trying to fight off the attackers, I'm kind of getting the vibe from this, so yeah, uh, big dude with a, uh, with the hammer, with the hammer coming down on Ethan, and then we're cutting to, I'm assuming Chris's first appearance in in the game and in, in the opening of the game. Uh, a close-up shot of Emily again. Seriously, she looks like Claire here, but you know, Asian. And here we get a uh, look at this new character here with a hat and some round glasses. Uh, I've got something to say about this character, but we'll get to it in a minute. Okay, he's about to take his glasses off. He looks familiar, actually, as hell. 
and he's taking his gloves off and we've seen a good look at his face and his eyes basically only his eyes really we can see his eye one eye so this character here again the the leaks have said that uh, the main antagonist is is the count is a count of sorts of this village area uh, and his name is Alan R that's not a lot to go on to okay however looking at this character here right I don't know if it's supposed to be a character I don't think it might be instead I think this might be uh, da was it Daniel Daniel Fabio or whatever who is the mastermind in Resident Evil F Resistance who's one of the masterminds the first mastermind in that game it's 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 a guy called Fabio like look at this guy's appearance and compare it to that character's appearance they look similar both wearing round glasses. And another thing to keep in mind is that character, Daniel or Fabio or whatever, he's supposed to be an apprentice to Alex Wesker in that in that game. Again, that game's not canon, obviously, but it could be a case where it could be a case where Capcom was working on this game at the same time as they were working on that game. And they were probably like, hmm, let's foreshadow elements of Resident Evil 8 early on. Let's give them the villains of the game. We already have Alex and that. We have, uh, you know, doing her little experience and that and that. Uh, and we got this new character called Fabio and that, who looks like a Wesker wannabe, Albert Wesker wannabe with the glasses and everything. But it could very well be this character, okay? It could very, this could be the big tie-in to the main canon of the games. This is, an, this is an area occupied by Umbrella before. This guy is an ex-Umbrella researcher. He's Alex's apprentice. Maybe Alex found him and they're working together again. I don't know. Maybe the leaks are right and this dude is this dude is actually called Alan. Or maybe it's a it's it's a, a, an anonymous name who's given himself to hide his true identity and it's going to reveal that no, this guy is actually that dude from Resistance. You know, you're killing two birds with one stone if you're using sort of the same character models and that. Do you know what I mean? Like, and that could have been. Capcom's way of trying to sort of set up RE8 by giving us resistance. I haven't played resistance. I am not going to play resistance. I don't play online games, so I don't really care about that. But uh, if, if they're taking a character from that and it, you know, or they were sort of, or they took a character from this and they put it in that as a setup, I can sort of see that being legit. So, and we're going more, and now we're seeing more characters. Obviously, I think this is Chris's. Uh, SWAT group, or maybe this is Blue Umbrella coming in into Ethan and Maya's house uh, to take to steal the baby. Okay, this shot here, uh, where if it, again, if this is Alex, uh, it, it's look, it looks like she's sucking or uh, drinking Ethan's. It looks like Ethan's hand is 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 cut off, but actually, in reality, it's it's like that. She's the hand is like that. She's grabbed it like that. His hand is like that. So you you can't you can't you can't kind of see it in the shot. It's like that. Do you know what I mean you you assume that it's it's been cut off? It's not. It looks like she's drinking from his hand. Maybe she's biting into it. So maybe, maybe she's going to be the vampire of the game, perhaps. And then uh, that, that it, it's going to be interesting to see why that is. Why they're drinking his blood? Maybe again, if he's infected with the E series, because we never did see him get cured. Either maybe they want him. Maybe they want the traces of that. And now we're coming to the Beast Man. We're getting a close up of it. There's the Beast Man. Screaming his lungs out. I imagine if Chris is infected and he's actually turning into one of these things, and like you constantly fight him, and then a, a big twist is, oh no, he's been the he's been the big werewolf chasing you throughout the game. Just imagine that, like that, if that was a twist. Uh, I doubt it, but you never know. Uh, very freaky design here. I love it. I love the whole look, uh, atmosphere, lightings of this game. The, the designs. It looks just. It looks great. It looks. It, uh, it is a huge departure, but at the same time, this is giving me huge Resident Evil 3.5 vibes. Like, you look at a lot of the concepts for that game, and it looks like this is what they sort of wanted to make before they cut it. And now we're cutting to the big reveal. You know, we got a big look. So look how big the village is. Obviously, you're going to probably start off in a forest, you're going to go to the village, and it's going to end with a castle, and maybe, maybe nest free. <laughs> great reveal. Great title reveal, in my opinion. That's the way to do it. And then our first look at Chris who actually looks like Chris from the previous games thank God that Capcom actually listened to the fans for once it's a shame they didn't listen for RE3 remake but they listened to this so you know and he's all dressed in black you know giving me Wesker vibes you know Chris's journey into 
becoming his worst enemy continuing, you know, if you're really paying attention to the games, uh, like, you can kind of see that evolution, especially in RE6 when he became the captain and, and he got his whole squad killed, I even if it was, like, by accident and that, you know, that, that's gonna be some freaking PSD mind vibes, like, uh, to, to the old days and stars. And there's me on the floor getting shot. Dying. So, Chris is the bad guy now, huh? I don't think so. I think Chris is pulling a double agent stunt here. I am 100% convinced something has gone wrong. He, he's either pulling an Ada Wong or a Krauser. A Krauser in terms of he has to do something in order to get on board with the bad guys. And he's going to be working from the with the bad guys, but he's actually working against them from within. And then the big twist at the end of the game is going to reveal that. And he's going to join forces helping Ethan save the day. Mia... I don't think is dead because remember if they're infected they can't technically die or maybe she is dead or maybe this is a hallucination or maybe Chris had no choice and he has to do something to prove his loyalty so he kills her and then he you know he brings Ethan there he takes the baby sort of like kidnapping Ashley if you will so yeah a lot of crazy theories trying to figure out what is what what is real do you know what I mean like so, because if, if, if this is Chris's way of getting in, it also kind of makes sense why the, the trailer says uh, his story comes to a close. It starts with that tagline and it ends with Chris. And potentially, it could, it, it, Chris could be the final, the final boss of the game. Or maybe it's going to be a case of where, you know, Chris sort of gives up, the day is saved, and it's like, you're going to have to kill me now as revenge. And Ethan does. You know, because no, no matter what happens, if, if the baby is alive and he saves his baby, he's got his baby, great. But the guy, the guy still killed his wife, and you know that's probably going to be the one sin that Chris is going to commit in this game, and it is actually going to stick, and he is going to want to have to die for that. Like, so maybe that's maybe that's what they're sort of doing. Hey, if that is the case, it, it, it it's a better way of killing off your main hero than you know smacking his head in with a golf club, right? Because that's how you do it. You, you take a character people love and you kill them very early on with a golf club. Because why the hell not? Because that's how you do it. You don't give them a fighting chance. You know, because you want to you wanna get those uh, twist points, right? Right? Anyway, uh, <laughs> enough about my angry brooding there. As so of you probably don't know what I'm talking about. Better you don't. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, if this is Chris's last game and... I'm curious to see how he's going to go out. If that's how he goes out, I don't mind it. He's, he's been, he's, if there's one complaint I have about the series is that we got way too many hero characters and they need to start dying, okay? You know, people are always like, oh, why don't they bring Jill back and stuff? Look, man, Jill is way too old now at this point. Uh, the events of Resident Evil 5 put her into like an extreme PTSD and stuff. And in Revelations 2, they pretty much even say that she's still recovering. It's been like a decade now since that. So, uh, you know, maybe she's back in the field. Maybe she's not. But honestly, like at this point, I don't care. Uh, you know, Barry got his moment to shine. Maybe he's going to get his moment to shine in this game. Or maybe he's dead again. You know, stop killing off characters. You've got way too many characters, okay? We've got way too many characters. And we need to start shortening that list. And if this game's going to sort of do that, I don't mind it one bit, you know. Because, you know, you, you can't keep using the same characters to, to have these fights. You know, at some point, you're going to have to sit down and go, this guy is, like, reaching 60 now, okay? It, it makes no sense for him to be able to, like, do all these crazy things. We're going to have to start killing off main characters. And it's like, yeah, you have to start. This is a horror series. This is an action-slash-horror series. You're going you're gonna to have to do, this, do something now at this point. Anyway, that's the breakdown of the trailer. I, I love what I've seen. And uh, the final part, obviously, is coming 2021. And it's confirmed to be on next-gen consoles only. Which pisses me off. Because you guys know how much I love getting my uh, special edition uh, steelbook sets. This is going to be a day one buy for me, obviously. Am I going to have a console by then? I don't know. I'm going to buy it day one regardless. I want this game. Even if I have to put, a, put it on a pedestal or, or in my collection box or something until I get a console... I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll wait for the gold edition because you know Capcom likes to release gold editions, right? Though to be fair, they haven't. They didn't do that with Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3 Remake. So, you know, the, those are the, the the versions we got. The versions we got, sadly. Um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to next year. Obviously, it doesn't say January. Uh, it, you can you can bet you can bet if the coronavirus hadn't happened, this game would be coming out in January, but it's not. 
and maybe that's also one of the reasons why it's not going to be a, a, a cross-gen uh, game as well because of the virus. So they were just like, they were like, screw it. You know, we need we need to sell the new consoles, put on the next gen only, maybe. Or maybe they're going to surprise us in August and be like, no, it's going to be cross-gen, don't worry. We decided it's going to be cross-gen. I'm still crossing my fingers it will be, but uh, I'm not holding out hope. This is obviously a next-gen tile, which means I'm going to have to... Oh god, I hope I hope that I hope it's gonna be cheap, man. I really hope it's gonna be cheap because I do not want to spend five hundred pounds on a console. Okay, I'm telling you right now, if it's four hundred pounds, if it's four hundred pounds, I'm gonna I'll, I'll I'll spend that. I'll I'll because that's the, that's pretty much the amount of money I make working every like every month. So you know, a month a month a month's pay to buy a buy a PS5. All right, fair enough, cool. If 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 if, if this game's coming out early January or whatever, New Year's present. If not. You know, say say maybe in 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 March or whatever. That's that's gonna be my Iranian New Year present then. In which case, okay, it, it, it fits. It all leads up to that. You know, I I can convince my uh, parents to be like, yo, get, 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 this is what I want as a present. Yeah, you know, for new for New Year. <laughs> Alright, guys, hope you enjoyed that breakdown. As always, like and subscribe, whatever. And I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care and bye.